Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Tro Pro Trader webinar. Uh, actually, this is recordings here. Uh, today we have um, uh, the uh, Pro Trader webinar series with Brent Kachuba from Spot Gamma. You may have heard of him. Uh, he's uh, futures and stocks and options, uh, of course, uh, a trader. He's going to go over futures and stocks. Um, and um, uh, Brent has a long history here uh, trading uh, equities and derivatives, 20 years. B of A, Credit Suisse, uh, in an equities broker um, in algorithmic sales and trading. Uh, following that, he was in institutional sales for Wolverine, represent, representing their electronic, electronic derivatives trading platform. Currently, Brent trades some proprietary strategies, strategies and runs spotgamma.com, which publishes various metrics on options data, various metrics, many, many metrics, as you will probably see here. Um, uh, here's uh, Brent's uh, contact information or Spot Gamma's contact information. If you are interested in this, um, you have the website uh, from the Bookmap Marketplace here. You will get access to. I'll show. I'll show you this in the Bookmap Marketplace. Uh, you get access to the Hero indicator, or also their levels. Uh, you have their email here, sg at Spot Gamma Twitter handle, uh, and then also there's special offering here. If you want to click on this link, I will put this into the chat for you guys, uh, so that uh, so that you have it. But uh, let me just show you the uh, bookmap marketplace really quickly here uh, so that uh, you understand uh, what this uh, indicator is in, in a little more depth here. So we'll go to the bookmap marketplace. Okay. And go up here, go to the home page. And here it is right in the top left uh, uh, a corner here uh, so uh, yeah you can read about it here there's um, a, a few different products they have in here uh, the heroes hero level it's uh, you know which is um, uh, hedge impact real-time options uh, and uh, also some uh, uh, options uh, gamma levels etc uh, so without further ado though let's just turn it right over to Brent and let him take it away yeah thanks Bruce how you doing I'm doing well doing well so uh, uh, yeah, looking forward as always uh, to uh, what you're going to have here uh, in the in the in the toy chest here to uh, <laughs> uh, go through uh, some of these uh, magical uh, options levels here. Yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> every time we get a market like this, it's uh, the, I forget what movie it's from. It's always that I love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I love these markets when they finally move. You know. Um, so I was gonna, uh, we're gonna cover the hero indicator and just give everyone a quick overview of that because the market is so active. <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to leave a little more time, kind of at the end, to show the live hero screen. We could talk about that. I have a few stocks loaded up. Take some questions on that. Um, but what we're gonna do quickly is just touch base on uh, spot gamma, what hero is, and then I have some data now, which is new. So even if you're sort of used to my hero spiel, um, I actually have some great data that shows how the uh, options print and that uh, invokes stock volume and then you can see the stock move along with that so it's, it's pretty neat um, so just to get a, a, a quick idea of what of who we are at spot game we produce options based uh, levels for trading stocks and futures so we analyze the options market and from that we produce uh, levels at which we think hedging flow that is bank market maker hedging flow will show up around those options levels and then we also predict volatility uh, which is a base, uh, which is based on the options position as well. Uh, so what we mean by that, if you look at today's current market, it's really very volatile. Uh, we predicted that if the market broke basically 44.50, uh, 44.25, somewhere in that area last week, uh, that volatility would really pick up substantially. Uh, and you could compare that to some of the notes we put out two weeks ago, where we said, look, you know, nothing's going on. Might as well uh, finish up your Labor Day vacation. So the volatility uh, forecasting, I think, is really helpful in. Con uh, in combination with some of the major levels and kind of as an incident uh, um, uh, just to note we have 4370 in SPX is the level we put out this morning uh, I can show you that on the chart as a, as a major kind of inflection point which is what the market is trying to digest at the moment uh, so as we sort of move ahead again I just talked about these major levels uh, in your book map system you can use cloud notes and automatically load those levels in so each day uh, each morning, excuse me, around 3 a.m., these levels update and uh, they show where we see the biggest inflection points that are support and resistance uh, in the market, uh, based again on those options positions and the SPX and the SPY um, in, if you're looking at futures. So let's talk quickly about the hero indicator. 
So the hero indicator is something uh, that we've produced uh, along with Bookmap uh, as a partner that we read all the options trades in real time. So it's the entire options uh, trade feed, right? All the bids and offers and quotes. And we figure out what are the biggest and most important trades taking place. And we publish a stream of those trades on the book map screen. And our belief here is that when large options trades are taking place, that invokes dealer hedging or market making hedging. And that hedging flow can move stocks and or futures around. And we have a bunch of, of data to back up that statement. So HERO simply stands for, as Bruce mentioned earlier, the hedging impact of real-time options. So again, as I just sort of noted, this, the big options trades leads to hedging flows. And those hedging flows, we believe, are the most consistent source of flow in the market when you're talking about stock and options. And, and the reason we believe is because the options market is growing. Uh, there's a lot of data out. Uh, for example, if you go over zero hedge, you can poke around for this chart. Um, I believe I put it on Twitter as well. But the options market has grown again in size. Uh, it's you know record volumes in the options market and liquidity in the underlying in the in the ES and in, in equities has been very flat. So if you have more options flow, you have more hedging flow, uh, which in turn indicates that the options market could control or the hedging flows could have more of an impact on the underlying stock in the way that they move. So not only is the options market larger, equaling more hedging flows, but uh, if you think about market making flow in general. They're trading their gamma, right? They're constantly having to rebalance their book. So if you were to compare hedging flows of like a big pension fund, you know, every quarter they come in, they rebalance, and then they're done trading, right? Uh, but the market makers, they rebalance, you know, at Friday's close, they got to rebalance again on the open. If the market moves a bunch intraday, they got to keep trading. So that hedging flow is persistent. It's always there. And so that is why we say it's the largest, most consistent flow. Uh, obviously, if one big hedge fund comes in or a giant pension fund comes in, they may move the market for an afternoon, right? But the but the market making flow is going to show right back up the following day. Just a basic overview of, of how delta hedging works. If a trader, uh, be it retail or some other fund, buys a call, that means that they're buying from a market maker or a dealer. That means the dealer short the call and they would need to buy stock as a hedge, right? So these are the underlying basics of order flow and how we think that these things uh, can impact the stock. Um, so when you're looking at the hero indicator in the readings, what we're showing you is the hypo hypothetical position that the dealer has to hedge. So if the hero reading is positive, uh, that means that market maker would need to possibly offset you know, the risk that they have and, and buy stock. Uh, so again, if the hero reading is positive, it means that the traders are buying calls or selling puts, which means that a market maker would have to buy stock, as you can see on this table. There's really two ways, uh, as we mentioned before, that the hero indicator is useful. One, it will help you spot large intraday trades. So did a did a really big whale come in and just sweep the book, uh, sweep all the options book and say AMC? Uh, so that's a that on-screen immediate impact of a trade. We think we do a great job of highlighting and, and letting people know when a trade took place. The other thing that's interesting is that you can use the hedging impact tool, which we show the cumulative flow over the whole day. So you could tell at the end of the day, okay, look, people were really buying a lot of puts today or selling a lot of calls or whatever it may be. And that could lead to end of day hedging, right? If the hedging flow is very negative through the day, then maybe market makers have to sell into the close to, to hedge their books. So you can figure out, get some insights on which way people are leaning or dealers are leaning, excuse me. And then kind of the third obvious one is, is sentiment, right? Uh, if you know everyone's buying calls, the hero indicator will be very positive and that can give you some information, right? That, that maybe is just setting up for a gamma squeeze, for example. Or look, you know, like today in the S&P, we'll take a look at the indicator and see are, are people buying puts, right? Can we figure that out here? And what how is that going to uh, help me estimate what the market's going to do? Not necessarily today, but tomorrow and the next day, right? Um, so that sentiment indicator is, a, is an important thing um, to realize as well. So the, the way that the hero indicator works, we have... Um, Two ways of showing you the flow. One is what we call the on chart indicator. And there's these small little triangles and the triangles can show up with every single option trade that takes place. So for the S&P or Apple, there's millions of trades that take place every single day, excuse me, millions of contracts that trade every single day. And we show you the size of that uh, trade as indicated on screen. The second way is this rolling sum that is at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, the rolling indicator is the sum, the rolling sum of all the individual trades, so the individual triangles, so to speak, 
um, that take place on the day. So the cumulative indicator is what you would look at to see, okay, what is the flow over the day, over the last hour, et cetera. So, so we try to contextualize uh, the information for you in a few different ways. It's important to note that this is all configurable, right? All the little triangle icons, everything that you see on my screen or in any of these pictures, you could change the color, the size, the shape, uh, not the shape, but the color and the size of the triangles or simply remove those from your chart and just view the cumulative indicator. So you have some ability to uh, overlay this information onto your custom book map setup. I know a lot of people are very particular about the information they're seeing and, and we want to sort of embed ourselves alongside of your existing setup and not sort of force you into a certain view. So let's take a quick example um, of the way that the hero indicator would work. In this case here, we're looking at GameStop. This chart is from a few weeks ago. Uh, but what you'll see here is the stock moves higher. And then out of the blue here, you see suddenly this hero indicator drops very sharply. So what this sharp drop is telling us that negative delta trades hit the market. Now, negative delta trades has to be either somebody sold calls or they bought puts. And the reason that we look at delta is, uh, for those of you who are, are a bit new to, to options trading, to hedge an options trade, you would monitor the delta of that options trade. The delta is telling us the number of shares that need to be bought or sold in order to neutralize the directional risk of an option. So if uh, Bruce was to buy a put from me, if I'm the market maker, Bruce buys a put, I'm now short a put as a market maker and I need to hedge that directional risk, right? So the way that I do that is I look at what the options delta is. We have trading systems that tell us that. And so for example, if the delta of that option is a 50, uh, that, no, that means that I need to buy 50 shares of stock for every single option that Bruce bought, for every single put option that Bruce bought. So you can see that if Bruce bought 10,000 puts, he likes to really sling those trades around and I need to buy 50 shares for every put that he bought and so you could see how that could impact or or have a major force or or influence on the way stock moves so in this case again right off the top of the stock huge bearish flow comes into the market uh in the option side and you can see how sharply the stock drops right so the information here to me is very valuable in that i know that dealers likely will need to sell here but i also know that if the stock suddenly drops you know it's a three dollar drop you're, you might be looking for news, right? You meet, might be on your Discord chat or on your message board saying, why did the stock just drop, you know, three, four, five bucks? Oh, huge options trade, right? No news, nothing else out there. It's an options trade. So that gives me this information now that if I wanted to like look into buying the dip after this trade, I also have a little more confidence in that because I know I have information as to why the stock declined in the first place, right? So there's there's different dynamics of how you want to look at this the, the, the options flow and the hero indicator and what you may draw or glean from that. Can you can you go back to that one for just a moment if I can interrupt you here? Um, so uh, I, I know that uh, I, I can't quite read it in the in the image there, but um, uh, some of the um, red triangles there because there's quite a few green triangles. Um, yeah. But the red ones, um, can you explain a little bit more about about that? Sure. So the green triangle is a positive delta trade, and the red triangle is a negative delta trade. So if I flip back to this original chart here. A positive delta trade is if someone buys a call or sells a put. So either of those two, buy, call, sell, put, those would invoke a green triangle or, or, or cause us to place a green triangle. And if somebody sells a call or buys a put, that's a negative delta triangle, right? Ostensibly a bet that the market is not going to go up, and that would be a red triangle. So back on this chart here, you'll notice that there's green and red triangles, but inside of the chart, and I apologize you can't read this, is a number. And the number tells us the size of the trade that took place. So the bigger the number, the larger the size. So that's why the cumulative indicator can be helpful because as you know, there's a bunch of green triangles here too. And so you can say, well, it's not it's not simply the number of triangles that you're seeing, it's the actually the total delta, right? So what I mean by that is you could have 50 green triangles here that all have, let's say a 10 in them, right? But then you get one red triangle that has a minus 10,000 and your net flow from that period is going to be minus 10,000, basically, right? Because those green trades, the green triangle trades are so small. So, you know, it, it, in other words, all day long, there's a lot of small retail trades, for example. You know, people buying through Robinhood, they'll buy a one lot call, et cetera, et cetera. But then all of a sudden at 12 o'clock, right, uh, Bridgewater or some massive hedge fund comes in and buys 100,000 puts. Well, all those little retail trades don't matter anything if Bridgewater comes in and buys 100,000 puts, right? So that's why the size of the trade 
And this cumulative indicator is helpful because yes, you can see on screen the little tr the, the triangles, which are very useful for placing you know a specific trade. Um, but you also need to be cognizant of how big the trade is, right? The, the delta size, so to speak. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's excellent. Um, and, and just a note too that you can also filter for those on chart. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so in the visual settings, you can use this slider, and, I, and actually, I think we just updated this. Uh, I need to update the slide here. I apologize for that. But you can set the filter to say, only show me trades that are above a certain size so that your your on-screen indicator here will just show you, and, and you can see on my screen, I'll, I'll demonstrate this, uh, just show me the big trades of the day, right? That's all I really want to see as a triangle on the screen. Because uh, if you view every single trade, particularly like Apple or Spiders, I mean, you're looking at, uh thousands of trades it can be a little overwhelming it's, it's pretty fascinating so let's show how this works in the es and the nasdaq as well now one of the things that's key to note about the way that we look at the es and the nasdaq we not only monitor the spx and the ndx those are the index options but we also monitor the spiders in the queues and that's really important because the Qs, if you just look at the NASDAQ, the Qs is a much larger options position than in the NDX index. So you really need to be aware of the Q, QQ options trading. But the same thing goes for, for the S&P flow. Spiders is at or larger at the moment in terms of options flow than SPX index. So if you're not watching both, you're missing literally half of the picture, if not more. So when you look at ES or NQ in the hero indicator, you're seeing both the index and the ETF flow combined on your chart. So here's a great example. Um, this one actually, we were giving a live demo back then uh, of this <laughs> of this trade, I believe, where you could see that there's just this giant print that takes place, right? This is somebody came in here and bought giant uh, a giant call position or they sold a huge uh, number of puts. And that is why the hero indicator jumps. And along with that, right off of this bottom, you could see that there's a really big, uh, 20 handle move in the futures, right? So this is a this is the kind of on screen. I mean, this is a wonderful indication here of the kind of flow that you will see. Um, and oftentimes, what you'll 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 also see is that there will be a fade sometimes after these moves take place. So maybe you miss the initial move, but if you know, okay, market spiked because of this big call trade. Now I know I could fade that, right? It's not because the Fed just came out and said that. They're lowering interest rates or some piece of news I missed. Huge options trade. Maybe I want to fade that move as opposed to try to run with it, right? So, again, there's multiple different ways to try to play um, the, the indications. Um, I, I, in terms of the a longer uh, view on the options order flow, in this case, you know, the market uh, um, going into this day was a little bit weak, right? And what we saw is every single dip that came, you could see that the hero indicator would have more bullish flow step in. And so that gave confidence to buy dips here because the options flow was positive all day, which indicated that call buyers were coming in. And then not only that, it also indicated that there may be quite a, quite a large amount of demand into the close because market makers really need to hedge at the close, uh, hedge their position into the close, right? If, if people are buying options, buying calls all day, then market makers may need to buy some futures to sort of shore up their risk at the end of the day. And that goes you know, double for a day like on Friday, for example, where there's a lot of put flow coming into the market. Market makers need to make sure that they're hedged going into the close. That, that 4 o'clock, 4.15 close is really important uh, to make sure their risk is squared away. So that's oftentimes what you can see in the last 10 minutes of the day, uh, just really you know, gappy, big, you know, 10, 15, 20 handle move in futures because, look, you got to get your risk uh, your risk right right before the before the weekend or before the uh, before the end of the day a, a question on on that uh brent um it, the um this might be um uh, you know uh, options expiration I'm, I'm not sure but uh uh when you see these types of you know huge uh, accumulation uh, on the options do you typically see like a two or three day run uh, to the upside after this yeah, it's. I think it's situational, really. Um, it, particularly in the call side, I think that's something that you can that you could say is true. Um, on the put side, it's a little more difficult to say because the the, the put side exhausts very quickly, if that makes sense. Um, so again, we're we're really in the process of gathering lots of data, and we're going to be able to start running some of these regressions where we say, okay, when the when the hero indicator is very positive one day, what happens in the next one, two, three, four, five days, and and can we draw correlations from that? Um, but a lot of times, 
I think in the put side, we can see exhaustion when it's a really negative day. Um, so that can actually indicate a, a, a flip or maybe a positive day in the next day. Uh, but you can also see the bullish accumulations will happen on, on several days in a row. And that can be say, that can be an indication that, the, that there's some more stabilization in the market uh, in a longer term bull run. So sort of recap, I think on the bullish side, you can extrapolate a few days out on the put side or the bearish side. It's a little bit harder to sort of have that view um, uh, several days out, if, if that makes sense. Yep, yep. Thank you. Sure. Uh, th you know, this this works the same way on the put side as, as we were just talking about. What's interesting here is that the uh, one of the Fed governors came out uh, at this time. Uh, I don't believe this is actually Powell. I think this was a, an, another meeting. Um, and, and they had mentioned something that the market initially took negative or, or didn't uh, – that was not, I think the market was unsure of whether it was positive or negative. You know, oftentimes the Fed, the, the Fed officials will say something and the market digests it very quickly and then the market bounces, right? So maybe we get initial drawdown off the headline reading algos and then it, it reverts, right? But in this case, you can see that the put buyers really came in off of that news, right? And we could tell it because this cumulative indicator really drops lower. I should note too, I in this picture, I changed the color of the on-screen triangles to just be gray, just as another way so that you can see the triangles. These are the same triangles that you see, you know, uh, here when they're red and green. It's just you could change the color to be gray. It's a little easier on the eyes sometimes. So at any rate, the put flow came in. So that told me that the market is not looking favorably upon this news, right? So while normally after those Fed, you know, comments, I will play a mean reversion trade, right? Because the put flow built so uh, steadily, that signaled to me, look, you don't want to try to buy this dip, right? You want to look to actually either stay short or stay out of the way of whatever may be coming. What's also interesting to know about this too is that you could see here at the end of the day, you know, right before five o'clock, we talked about having hedging flow into the close that needs to adjust. And that's exactly what happened here. We moved from 4,200 down to 4,175 in the, in the matter of just a few minutes. Uh, based on that, you know, hedge adjustment. This is a screenshot from yesterday, and this kind of leads me into some of the new information for those of you who are uh, been been using the Hero system for a while. What we've actually seen, which has been really fascinating, particularly a few days, is that um, we're getting some insights into the type of flow that's coming into the market. And normally, what people say is, "Hey, you know, the Hero indicator was positive, but the market went down." What's up with that, right? Or vice versa. And what's been really fascinating to watch, uh, we put a few different pieces of our information together, is there's clearly volatility trades that are taking place and we're able to pick those up. So what I mean by that is if you are a volatility trader, you are going to buy or sell options, right? And you're going to hedge yourself with stock accordingly. Um, and that is going to have an impact on volatility and the way that things are positioned. So in this case, what you see here is that the options market has a very, uh, the, the hero market has a very bullish outlook, right, to start the day, meaning this is all positive delta trades to start the day. Somebody is in here buying calls and or selling puts, right? But futures sold off hard over that exact same time frame, and you can see right around noon, the flow stops and it changes, right? The, the hero indicator goes flat, which tells us that whatever, sorry, whatever the start of day flow was, it stopped. So whoever was buying calls or selling, excuse me, yeah, whoever was buying calls here or selling puts, stop their flow. If the hero indicator goes sideways, that means nothing's really happening in the market, right? And whatever the futures trade was, that seemed to stop as well. And that happened right around the European close. So we think this was likely somebody shorting futures against some type of uh, volatility trade. So they're, they're selling puts, uh, <clears throat> or buying calls against a uh, as a way to express a view on volatility. Now, what's interesting is the day before this, the flow was the exact opposite. In other words, the hero indicator is very negative and the, uh, the ES went straight up. And so what we knew about these days was somebody uh, closed up a massive strip of in the money calls the day before and the hero indicator was negative because of that, but they bought back futures, which pushed the market higher. And then if you saw in our, our daily note, we could see that that left this void, right? This volatility 
trade left this void in the market that allowed us uh, that allows us to see that hey you know there's not that much support in the in the market sort of backfilled again the following day so if you combine this flow what's interesting about this is, is if you combine this flow even though the market is down this hero indicator is positive you know towards the end of the day it looks a little bit negative it shifted a little bit negative towards the end of the day uh which indicated some you know maybe people are buying some puts or selling some calls but what's fascinating about this is even though the market is down sharply the vix which you can see here this is just that last day stayed really contained in other words if this market was dropping because people were buying puts volatility would have a massive spike but in this case this is a five-day chart of the s p here and a five-day chart of the vix everything was very contained so what i'm getting at is that yes this is a big sell-off in the market and you go to, and you might say to yourself well it, are people buying puts is there a fear trade in place well this is a delta unwind right this is a trade unwind and i believe that because again the the synchrony the synchronicity between the futures and the options market right but vol didn't break out <coughs> excuse me whereas if you look at the move overnight today the vix went up from 20 to 25 and if we look at the hero indicator you'll see for today there's a different it's very negative right so there's a fear trade today so how will i you know bruce just mentioned this right does this mean something for tomorrow well i think it does right if i if i know that this is a long vol unwind right then that's a different way to play it than if i know people are buying puts and the market is scared and there's a fear trade in, in place So again, for those of you who are, are watching the ES on, on, a, on a given basis, put these two together, right, with the with VIX or implied vol, and, and it starts to tell you a little bit of a story, right? And you can combine you can combine this with positioning. How did open interest change? You know, uh, how's gamma positioned? <clears throat> Excuse me. And you start to get more of a 3D picture, so to speak. Um, and, and I should note that this is generally only applicable to the ES and, 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 and NDX. You can see in single stocks, you can see there are volatility traders, but it tends to be more directional flow. Uh, whereas what we've seen recently, particularly in our options expiration, is this adjustment that, that are clearly volatility trades taking place. So the stuff that's new for everybody that I think is really exciting to watch, and, and for those of you who are maybe considering, you know, here or, or trying to figure out what the impacts of options is, this is really exciting. We've been gathering data for quite a while. We've been uh, working on a way to really parse through that data, get it in the right you know, format, clean it, et cetera. And we have some really pretty cool charts to look at. So <clears throat> the components of Hero, as we sort of are outlined already, is that there's large option trades that invokes big stock volume and hedging activity, and that makes the stock move. That's the fun fundamental theory behind everything that goes on. So let's just take a quick look here. This is a chart of AMC <clears throat> for Friday. Now, there's only two things on this chart is I wanna make it very clean to look at. On the bottom is the stock's volume. So many of you are probably familiar with you know, volume profile where most of a stock's volume takes place at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, right? It's that volume smile. And then in lunchtime tends to be the lowest uh, amount of stock volume. At the top, we have the hero signal. Okay, so the hero signal in this case is bucketed into one uh, is in one minute buckets. So what's the cumulative reading for each one minute reading? So um, if you were to basically add up all those triangles and just track them in one minute bucket only, that's essentially what we have. And then we have one standard deviation is a red line and then two standard deviations is a green line. So basically the red and green lines tell us what's a big signal. So obviously, as you know, there's one massive signal here, right? So giant uh hero reading for amc here it's a negative delta reading so somebody bought a bunch of calls or sold a bunch of puts and then what you'll notice is and bruce hopefully you can make this out right here right after that is a giant chunk of stock volume right um option trade takes place massive stock volume takes place and then i highlighted a bunch of other readings on here as well that when there's a big option print associated with that right almost immediately these black lines are indicating that are spikes in options volume or excuse me spike spikes in stock volume so again huge option delta big stock volume jump right so i know what all, you guys are all saying well what does that mean for the price so i i got you so i highlighted uh just on this on this very simple chart 
a red area where the negative delta trades are. So if the spike down, it gets a red arrow. If it's spiked up, we got a green arrow. And it's pretty revealing, right? Here is that massive trade, this first red arrow. And then here's the subsequent giant red trade, which is again a you know a two or uh, a two one or two standard deviation print. And so you can see clear as day here what what happens, right? Big put delta trade comes in, market goes down. Around this bottom is a big green call trade or somebody sold puts, one of the two, right? And so you can see everywhere there's a positive delta trade, a large trade, there are impacts in, in the market. Now, some of these trades, again, are through a bank desk, and I'll touch on this in a minute, where I'm going to call up, say, JP Morgan on you know equity derivatives desk and say, hey, I want to buy 10,000 AMC calls, in which case the bank may print their hedge first. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. Um, and so you know, you may see the stock move first and then the option print take off. Again, that's information for you though. Uh, but most of the time in these single stocks, you'll see what are op generally options sweep. So when algo sweeps all of the options exchanges, and then you'll see the stock move as the as the brokers or, or market makers need to adjust their exposure. So you can see the correlation here. Um, you know, big option print, stock sells. A, a series of option negative delta prints, red arrows again, stock sells off. Big inflection point here. Big options trade, positive delta trade. Someone's got to buy stock ostensibly to hedge and up the stock goes. So you can see that these correlations between, again, these big options trades, big stock volume and a move in the stock. So I, I just mentioned, you know, calling a desk. I think most of the really big flow in the S&P goes through desks, right? You're going to call up your uh credit swiss bank of america morgan stanley whatever and they're going to put the trade up <clears throat> where they get their hedge off first and then print the trade right that's how they'll tend to do it so what we'll see here is you notice in the s p there's a lot of two two uh one and two standard deviation trades but this one in particular i want to highlight because you can see the stock volume hits right before the hero signal picks it up in other words real quick stock print now put the option up right because as the broker wants to get his hedge off before the market knows that a big trade took place but again the correlation is there between big uh option prints and big volume prints in the stock so on this particular move here you'll see that this is where that big stock print went up with the the hero signal because that hedge went off first you see there's a little tick up first and then the and then the option print takes place but the other interesting trade i mentioned before algos is that you can see it's more likely a sweeper of some kind came in right and hit the market with a bunch of a, a series of small trades over about five or ten minutes so this trade likely didn't go through a bank desk because it took place in a bunch of small pieces and you can see that took place right at the bottom of this market here so again here's the red arrow where you see that there's a bunch of negative trades come in and the market sells off pretty hard. So why did the market drop here? Well, a series of negative delta trades took place. It likely had to get hedged out pretty quickly. And then you could see right at this 1351 point, which is right at this green arrow, the trade suddenly flipped to some bullish sweepers come in and that marks a bottom in the market. So that takes place around 1351, which is somewhere in here where you could say, you know, it's a little bit tougher to pick up because it's not one big trade. But if you see it on a cumulative basis, which you pick up on the, on the hero cumulative reading, you would see these inflection points that take place uh, in the market that can mark big tops and big bottoms. One other one I want to check out, um, not always do are, are there big trades, you know, all day like in AMC. Sometimes you really just have one or two really big trades and then, you know, it's pretty quiet the rest of the day. So I know a lot of people like to focus on some of these Bitcoin stocks. In this case, you have MARA where you have you know one or two really big trades in the day um, that you know maybe you want to focus on or pay attention to these other signals are a little bit smaller so you know there's a lot of stocks to, men to, to monitor and you'll get one or two big uh, prints that take place that give you an opportunity to interact with that options flow or possibly build some trades around it and i highlighted excuse me those trades here you can see this really big one around noon uh i mean it, it corresponds to the minute you know with a huge bottom in the stock and then a little bit later we have a negative delta trade excuse me we have another positive delta trade uh which doesn't create the same volume right doesn't create the same push um but then nothing else really happens and then obviously then we have these other two trades here that i that i highlight 
uh, on, excuse me, on the screen. So, you know, these patterns show up uh, with different frequency depending on the stock that you're looking at. <clears throat> and so uh, that's just a, a, a key thing to note and a, and a key thing to monitor. Yeah, uh, as Bruce mentioned before, I'm going to show my actual <clears throat> uh, screen now. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, but you can go to the Bookmap Marketplace and sign up, not just for the Hero Indicator, but you can also sign up to our, uh, we send out two daily notes every single day, uh, as well as the on-screen uh, Hero Indicator that we're talking about here. So you can subscribe to all of those services uh, through the Bookmap Marketplace. So I'm going to switch over to the um, Hero Indicator itself. I'm happy to take any questions on the material I just presented. If you want to ask some questions about the market, if, if Bruce is okay at that, I'm happy to offer whatever view I may hear. Uh, I'll just say, <clears throat> starting off with what the flow is for today, you know, we started the day very neutral. As you can see here, there, there was a some bearish options flow to start. Um, the readings will quickly get in. As you can see here, we're positive 80,000 on the hero reading right now. So there was some bearish minus 20,000 is what we got to on the hero indicator. So some you know, small light put flow came in, and then this is switched to be quite bullish over the day. There's clearly one very big trade that took place here, positive delta trade, and then the trend is working up now. Um, so you can see that flow, you know, come in. These dips are getting bought at the moment, and the market is staying pretty flat right around this big combo level, which is uh, a combination of spider option positioning and SPX. That's what we call it, the combo. Um, so this is a liquidity center here around this 4370, and it looks like the the options flow is sort of really centering around um, uh, that level at the moment. Um, interesting if you want to flip over to some other single stocks too, like AMC. I mean, AMC for one is just with the hero indicator. Uh, it, it seems almost you know um, like well, I talk about all the time. I'm gonna phrase this a little bit how the how AMC is just controlled by options flow. I've posted tons of videos about this on my YouTube channel. You can check that out. Um, that you could just see the options flow kick in on this thing and knock it back into place all the time. This is a primary example here. You can see right off the top at 43, the options flow just flips very, very, very bearish. Um, you can see there's two big prints here, 8, 3K, 8K, and the stock just slides lower. And then you'll see this flow will flatten out and the stock will regain its footing. Um, so you can see these things will correspond to each other and the options flow will lead AMC uh, very consistently. Thing that Apple uh, starts off pretty negative. You can see on this case, I have not uh, gotten rid of my on-screen indicators. So you can see how overwhelming those on-screen indicators can become. So we can just come in here and make a quick adjustment. Uh, I want to show only things of a certain size. And we can do that. So there's only been one really big trade and that was a little bit early in the day. It looks like off the open, someone uh, got a little bit bullish in here and the big option print corresponds with a pretty good lift in the stock. So with that, uh, I will take any questions if anyone has them, you can put them in the chat, I suppose, uh, is the best way. Um, and yep. if for some reason I didn't get to what you're talking about, if you have any questions, you can reach us at info at spotgamma.com. I'm at spotgamma on Twitter. Uh, you can get to our YouTube channel, which is YouTube slash Spot Gamma. Um, and I am, again, happy to take any questions or uh, we can close it up as I know the, the market is pretty, pretty busy today. Uh, yeah, we got a, a few questions here. And um, also, I, I know that you're putting different metrics together now, um, but in use case scenarios um, of the uh, hero indicator, um, sometimes you, I mean, you, you went through a, a couple uh, where you know the um, the cumulative is moving down, but the market is moving up. Correct. Um, and 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 they and then time other times it's the opposite. How I mean, with your options background and knowledge, um, how do you define some of those things and some of that phenomena? Because you do define it, and you're just saying, oh, okay, this is what's going on uh, at this point yeah. in the market. Yeah. Well, there, so there's there's really two ways to to um, to kind of put this together, right? Um, so if you think back to that table where I talked about what is a positive delta trade, a positive delta trade is if someone's buying calls, right? They're buying call options or they're selling puts. If it is a negative delta trade, it means that they are selling calls or buying puts. Now, I talk about the way to measure implied volatility is just to look at the VIX. There's a lot of people, very sophisticated traders who, who will probably 
you know, say that's not the cleanest way, but for people who are just getting used to the options market, it's a it's a good way on a short-term basis to measure that. So if people are buying puts, they are buying options, and that usually means that volatility is going to go up, the VIX is going to go up. So <clears throat> just to tell you what the VIX is, the VIX measures the price of all options that expire within 30 days, of all SPX index options that expire within 30 days. So if people are buying a bunch of puts because they're scared that the market's going to crash, the VIX goes up because people are buying puts. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so if the hero indicator is going down, if it's a negative indicator reading, but the VIX is not going up, then that's telling me that people are not buying puts, right? Because if they were buying puts, the VIX would be going up. Does that make sense? Yes. So I can therefore intuit that traders must be selling calls to generate those negative deltas because selling calls means they're selling options which means that that is not going to that's not going to push the vix higher does that make sense yep very clear so if the market is, so deltas are going up today right the the options indicator is going up today the vix is flat to slightly higher um if people were buying calls right now now, obviously, this is a little tricky because when you buy calls, you're not going to have as much of an impact on the VIX, right? Because people are also going to be selling puts likely at the same time. But because the VIX is not really dropping very hard and we have positive delta readings, I I view that as people are buying calls today and not really selling puts. If people are selling puts, we'd see a big drop in the VIX. Right now, the VIX is basically at the high of the day, uh, 26, right? So... If people were going to sell puts, then I would say, okay, they're they're not scared anymore, right? They're closing up their fear position, so to speak. But because the deltas are up, right? This, this is telling me people are buying calls because the VIX is also not dropping. If they were selling puts and getting out of their position, we'd have positive deltas. In other words, the hero indicator would be positive, but the VIX would be getting crushed. Does, it, does that make sense? Yes. So we have the FOMC tomorrow, right? And the we our view is that because people are worried now is 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 the fed going to say taper or not and, and you know i'm not qualified to really opine on any of that here in this in this session but i will just say people are worried right they're concerned that this time the fed is going to say taper or that evergrande is you know a real calamity this time whatever it may be people are not selling out of their puts even though vix is pretty flat right and the market is not really doing very much at the moment and so you would expect you know, if there was going to be a big rally, that volatility, i.e., VIX, would get crushed, and then, and then, you know, people would be getting out of their puts as fast as possible. Because, as you know, when the market rallies hard and, and implied volatility or the VIX drops really hard, that means put values are getting destroyed, right? And, and it's a race to get out of them as fast as you can to try to save some of your money. But in this case, VIX isn't going down. Yes, we have some positive delta readings, but those are, I think, those are call buyers, right? So people buying calls is a much different thing from people selling puts total different risk profile right because you have very defined risk if you're buying a call that's kind of like taking a punt that you think the market's going to go higher but the people you know if you sell a put uh you you have much more risk on the table if the market drops right because you're exposed you're exposed to higher amounts of risk as the market goes down whereas if you sell a call the most you're going to lose is your is your call premium right so I don't know if that was, uh, I hope that was a sort of a helpful view of what it is I'm looking at. I, I, I should definitely uh, write and do some videos and put some material together, of, you know, to elaborate on that. But hopefully everyone at least kind of was able to glean some of the ways that I'm looking at this order flow. No, that that, that, that was very helpful. Like a great, great scenario there. Cool. Um, let's just try and see if there's any other questions in here. What the spot game, a main function were correlated with futures. I'm not entirely sure what that means, Mark. Uh, Mark, if you could elaborate on that question, that'd be helpful. Um, a raise, so a rising hero and rising VIX would mean call buyers, correct? Right, so Tim, that that is more or less the way to look at it, right? But obviously, you know, um, <clears throat> call buying, right? As in this case, I'm looking at the VIX, the VIX is again at the high and because the hero was up, you know, I think that was just call buyers today. So that's exactly how I would look at that. If if the VIX was just getting absolutely annihilated today and we had those positive delta readings, then I would say this is likely more a put seller, right? Vol seller rally than it is a... Uh, uh, I do not have the NQ feed up. So the, the hero data is going to be delayed here. I can bring it up for a moment.
So we'll let uh, we'll let the hero indicator get kind of caught up with the market here, and then we can take a look at the Nasdaq. Um, could you use the hero indicator along with the cumulative delta? Yeah. So Daniel, you know, I, I think that there are definitely people who have uh, messaged me and sent some information about the CVD delta combined with the hero, and I think what you can see is that there will be correlations between uh, that cumulative volume delta as well as what you know what is happening with the options market so we we're just talking about is it vol sellers right um and is that why we're getting sort of positive cvd along with negative hero readings and can you kind of put those pieces together so i think i have not personally done a big study there i know there are several subscribers who do uh compare those things and have gleaned some information uh from from uh that information uh, or, or from those two signals um is there a rough minimum daily option volume that we'd use for the hero <clears throat> so dan another great question so what we're doing currently is we are storing the live hero reading now in databases so in the next two three weeks we will be able to start putting out information that tells you uh what should measure as a significant trade now for each stock that's going to vary a little bit right uh, because the volume profile of every stock is a little bit different um so we're going to start kind of like arming people with a little bit more information now uh over the next several weeks that i think will clear up sort of what is a big signal or important signal for a stock and what is not like you know what you can what you can watch for um puneet asks is 67k is big or small 67k is pretty decent um generally six figures low six figures is kind of where the the readings get to be their largest so you know this is a very big trade here that took place earlier today it's about uh let's see we went from 1800 up to 39,000. so you know that is a very large trade again i've seen 100 or 200,000 is kind of where the entire thing will will uh will cap out um there will be a recording of this re webinar i believe uh, bruce can confirm that yes we do not jessica good question we do not track um options on futures at the moment so when you're looking at the ES call and put flow, you are seeing the SPX and SPY options flow. Uh, I've looked at the futures flow. There is, uh, compared to the SPX and SPY, it's much, much smaller flow. And it's an entirely different data feed. So the, the cost uh, is really pretty substantial to just add a little bit onto the signal, uh, but it's something that is on the drawing board. Do I watch uh, Hero? on the vix or the vvix so we watch the so if you bring up the vix futures you will see the vix options um i hope that answers your question on that todd uh, can i explain on the implications of negative cumulative hero reading for individual stocks while the price is moving up uh my view of that is it's so there's two there's two things to really answer here one is figuring out is the flow substantial in a stock in other words we may have just had one or two put trades today, right? In in AMC, I don't think that's the case for AMC, uh, but let's, let's take a look at Wish and see what Wish is doing. So, just for example, you know, the float in Wish, I believe, is much smaller, the stock float, than AMC, right? So, we may have a negative uh, hero reading for any given stock, but it may be negative just because only a few trades took place, right? So, it's just not material. Even though it's negative, it's not material. So, when you have to figure out, is it, is it a big amount of flow that's taking place. Um, this will be an interesting stock to watch because as you can see here, this is this flow is accelerating to the downside in Wish. Uh, so it's gonna be very interesting to watch what happens to the stock in the next few minutes. Um, so you, you gotta kind of contextualize everything, right? Is the hero reading large, which is something that we're working on giving data to everybody to, to, to sort of help inform you of that? Um, and then two, you know, what is the direction of that flow? So, um, it's possible that there's volatility traders in particularly like big names like Apple, where there's tons of order flow, uh, options order flow. Uh, same thing with Tesla. I mean, there's likely to be a lot of volatility traders in Tesla as well. You know, I mean, you look at this, uh, you you look at this order flow, and you know, there's no question about what is going on in Tesla right now, right? Um, you know, th this delta reading is almost as big as what's going on in the ES, and it's very bearish um when you look at this so if this was going up with the stock going down then then you would say that it's possibly a volatility trader right someone short in the stock and buying uh buying vol so what i would expect is the market does have a larger drawdown and volatility really spikes you're probably likely to see a bunch of stocks where the order flow <clears throat> is positive 
and maybe that's against a short stock position. In other words, maybe I'll sell puts and then short some stock against it as a way to hedge because I just want a short volatility, right? I don't actually want to uh, be, it's not a directional view on the stock, it's a view on the volatility. So anytime I see substantial order flow, meaning substantial hero order flow, that contradicts the movement of the stock, then I'm thinking that it's probably a volatility trade uh, and not necessarily, you know, directional flow. And, and the implications of those could, could be different. Uh, it, it's also, you know, let's also be clear on something. If traders are shorting a stock, you know, because the Reddit board said to, and a giant fund comes in like on our S&P rebounds day to just buy a stock because they need to own it on their balance sheet. Well, then the two signals can conflict for, you know, reasons that have nothing to do with each other, right? You can, you can have, of course, situations wherein someone is just a big buyer of the stock and that's irrespective of, of options overflow, right? So you need to make sure that those correlations are clear and intact uh, and obviously be aware of, you know, are the signals corroborating right um if we're seeing movements down in here are we seeing how are we seeing the stock react at the same time uh, those kinds of things uh is the hero showing the next spx resistance as 43.44 today um right so let's be clear about two things one the levels that you see on the left are provided from spot gamma the spot gamma service those are irrespective these levels over here have, uh I shouldn't, I don't want to say nothing to do with this. There's actually some uh, synchronization here, but the hero reading uh, does not link directly to these levels that you see on the left. So our spot gamma service does show a support bar at 4344, uh, which I believe is Ravi's question. This 4370 area is a big one. And then if we scroll up, you see there's a concentration of our levels uh, quite a bit out of the money. So, you know, this is where we would view heavy resistance in the market up around 4440 area, basically, uh, if I zoom way out. So as we're kind of talking here, the um, the order flow is a little bit positive, but what's interesting is the VIX is threatening to kind of break down. And I think that would be the fuel. If the VIX really kind of breaks back below 25, is where you really see that ramp higher on uh, the market. Uh, what spot gamma main function for futures traders? So the spot gamma, the main function is support and resistance uh, lines along with volatility estimates uh, that we are calculated from S&P options positioning. So we it's a database analytics of support and resistance lines. So whether you're a swing trader or some other type of trader in futures, uh, everyone uses the levels a little bit differently. We have a lot of options traders that like to use the levels uh, for volatility estimates. Again, where are the big support and resistance lines? And um, that's what Spot Gamma provides on a daily basis. Uh, Joe asks if there's a correlation between tick and gamma info. I would imagine there is. That would be pretty interesting to look at. I have not looked at that myself. Uh, could you put together a table of what you're saying earlier? Yes. So, Puni, great question. Um, I'd be more than happy. I'll write that down now to put that VIX table together. Um, So I got that written down. I'll do that today for sure. Uh, is there a way to filter on-screen hero size by standard deviation? There is actually, yes. Good question. So in the hero indicator here, uh, there's an automatic filter here. So if you check that, you can mark it by standard deviation. So great question there, Daniel. Uh, and then last question, and we'll let everybody head off, is why do the cloud notes levels line up, not line up exactly? So the reason is, Razor, great question. We... All of our data is sourced from the SPX index options. So as you know, the SPX trades at a VIG or spread to the actual ES futures. So 4370 is roughly 12 points equivalent uh, to what is mapped out on the screen here of, I believe, 4358. So that's why you see a difference between the levels. The label is in SPX terms, but it's mapped onto the futures trading price. So that's why you see a difference there. <clears throat> uh, how about the combo level? Uh, yeah, so the combo level is the same thing. So what we do for combo is we map, we take the SPY options and the SPX options. We combine those together. We back out the SPX price, and then we adjust the SPX price to the futures price. So all, again, all labels are in SPX terms. Um, that's the cleanest way to say it. They're all in SPX terms. That's what the label is, but the print, where it is printed on your chart is at the equivalent ES price, and that spread adjusts over time. So by the time the contract rolls, that spread is usually only about two points. In other words, our label will only be two points off of the futures uh, futures price. 
So uh, we'll, we will leave it at that. We know it's kind of run up to the top of the hour. Um, again, if you have questions. Actually, oh, I'm, I sorry. Do, ahead, Brent, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, can you show um, more information about where I can find videos and your blog and articles? Yeah. On, um... 100%. Sorry about that. Um, we'll flip back to our PowerPoint here. So uh, this is where you can reach us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, sorry. Uh, we are at uh, spotgamma.com. Info at spotgamma is our email. Again, we have a bunch of YouTube videos at youtube.com slash spotgamma. I do a lot of stuff on Twitter as well. If anyone's there, you can catch me at spotgamma on Twitter. I'm more than happy to uh, try and help answer any of your questions. Uh, but <clears throat> we have a lot of resources both on our site uh, and on YouTube for anyone who wants to learn more about Hero or just in general some of the uh, different ways that we view uh, market order flow. Yeah, maybe you, can you show your website and 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 the blog and 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 some of the videos there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's just a, such good content on there. So just go to the horse's mouth here, basically. Yeah, definitely. So this is our this is the Spot Gamma site. So uh, when you subscribe to Spot Gamma, uh, you have access to what we call our portal, and through there, uh, you can get access to just tons of different ways that we analyze the market. For example, um, if you check out the levels in the S&P 500. We produce gamma-based analysis. So where are all the biggest option strikes in the market? Uh, how do these roll on a daily uh, on a daily basis, right? So these are, these are indications of where the big open interest lies in the markets. Uh, many of you are familiar with the concept of gamma uh, and vanna. Uh, so we produce charts that measure the amount of gamma and vanna in the market. And then we explain to you every morning what the impact of these different positions are, right? So we don't just say, here's what gamma is for the day. We tell you exactly uh, what the impact of that should be uh, in the market. We also have a tool called the Equity Hub, which allows you to analyze the stock, uh, the, the options position for over 3,000 different stocks. So that's the tool that we have on screen here now. So you can use this in conjunction with the Hero Indicator. So for example, in AMC, if I bring that up, you can see where most of the options are positioned. You can see when the bulk of those positions expire. Uh, and the impact that that has on the stock is uh, is detailed in our blog. We have tons of different resources on our blog that explain how different traders. So many of you may be familiar with Doug Kless, for example. Uh, he he posted some great charts on here of how he takes advantage of using our different metrics uh, to trade for himself. Right. Um, so there's a couple of uh, uh, of great recent posts from him, uh, as well as some other contributors that outline how to use all these tools, right? How to add them to your existing uh, trading style, right? We, I think the key here is we're not trying to offer you a trading style. We're not trying to tell you how to trade. We're simply saying, what is your strategy? And you can overlay this options data on top of that, right? Do what you're comfortable with, but just consider what the options positions are and make addendums or adjustments to your uh, existing strategy when these big options levels come into play. Okay, and uh, just uh, one more comment. Uh, like, uh, it looks like uh, I didn't want to bypass uh, Omar here. He was asking for, or he had a suggestion to show um, on chart, on screen uh, triangle of delta um, instead of the actual, the overall kind of um, uh, uh, um, aggregation. Uh, I know it's in the subchart, uh, but uh, he, he was he was asking or suggesting to see it on chart as well. Is that that's what the triangle is? I believe is that what he's I thought the the triangle was the individual um, transaction of, of where where that took place. Yeah. So uh, so for example, here um, I highlighted only the largest trade so far for the ES. And so you can scroll back here, and this is this is part of why it's so great to have this book map is the you know your you save a recording of this data right, and you can zoom in and say what happened here right, what was that really big trade that we were talking about earlier, and I can zoom in on that and see exactly what the market did at that time. All right, you can see that impact, you know, right there. So I'm not sure if this is what Omar is getting at, but I believe we, I believe Bookmap and, and uh, the Hero Indicator can do uh, what he's asking for, but please correct me okay. if that's if Okay, that's yeah, I, I was a little confused myself and I, I wrote him, uh, I replied to him there as well, uh, but um, okay. yeah. Yeah, well, uh, we're, that being said, we're, we're open to any and all suggestions. Uh, you know, you can send them over info at spotgamma.com. You know, we love to take feedback and, and help uh, consistently and constantly improve our our products. All right. Well, thank you very much, Brent. Um, 
uh, you know, uh, Doug Pless is actually going to be um, uh, presenting on Friday. Uh, so uh, uh, he, he's going to be going through some of his uh, uh, hero uh, options uh, and uh, some of the uh, spot gamma levels as well uh, in his strategies. So uh, yeah, everyone, you have the the link yeah, for. And, uh, and, uh, I want to mention David Blake as well. Uh, David is a contributor for us. I know he's uh, he's active in the Bookmap community. He's posted uh, a lot of great content pieces as well. How he uses the the, the hero indicator and this other pieces of information to trade. So. Um, you know, you can check out his work as well. Yeah, yeah, lots of great stuff from David as well. Uh, he presented last uh, a Pro Trader webinar, and we'll have him. Uh, we'll have him again though. Um, but uh, um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, mention that you, to see someone else's strategy, uh, uh, you will see Doug on Friday. Uh, it's the same link that you use for this webinar here. It'll just be at Friday at, at 10 a.m. All right. Great. So. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Brent, and um, uh, really interesting stuff as always. Uh, and we will have the recording up uh, later this afternoon, probably in about two or three hours. Thanks, Bruce. I, I really appreciate the opportunity, and, and I thank everyone for coming on this uh, very volatile day. All right, thank you very much, Brent. Take care. <laughs>